This video is going to be very different to my normal format. No product reviews, no detailed technical specifications, and no configurations. But something's been on my mind for a while now, and I need to get it off my chest. And I think what I've got to say applies equally to those just entering and those longer-term flight sim enthusiasts. I think it's more than fair to say that the introduction of Microsoft Flight Simulator some just over two years ago has led to an explosion of users. And this in turn has led to a rapid expansion of both software releases and hardware products available. There's more choices available today than ever before. But the purpose of this video is simply to remind you to focus on what's important to you. It's all too easy to get caught up in the gusto of new releases, new products, and that can be a good thing. But don't forget to pause and ask yourself one question. Why are you flight simming? Welcome back to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching. And let's get on with it. In my opinion, the most moronic question anybody can ask in flight sim is, is it a game or a simulation? And fortunately, the answer is an overly simple one. It's both. It's whatever you want it to be. If you want to bomb around in a fighter jet and crash into buildings, nothing wrong with that. You want to control E and get up in the air and just fly around? Well, I say game on. Or perhaps you want to do some sequence training, practice realistic procedures to complement your flight training. Or you'll actually read the manual, flick every switch, turn every dial and fly that beauty by the book. Flight simulators in general and Microsoft Flight Simulator in particular is both a game and a simulator. It's your choice. And many of us probably do both. I certainly fall into that category, depending on how the mood takes me. Jumping into this niche world of flight simulation is an amazing experience and highly rewarding, subject to your expectations. But there are two very common pitfalls, and I want to take a moment to remind you of them. And the first one is what I call tweak mania. And tweak mania is normally a symptom of being bitten by that aviation bug. It's almost an inevitable side effect. And what is it? It's where you become so obsessed with performance and getting that extra one or two frames per second that you end up with your head buried inside your simulator's config files, changing this and changing that. And we need to be careful this doesn't become obsessive. Otherwise, you end up not flying and getting up in the air is the reason you bought Microsoft Flight Simulator or your flight simulator in the first place. And in my experience, it's not uncommon to find one tweak compounded on the next and the next can result in your performance degrading overall. I had one subscriber recently recount an experience to me. He had done tweak after tweak, change after change, and just couldn't get the performance that he wanted and he couldn't remember all the different changes that he had made over time. And I have to say, in relation to his hardware specifications and his RTX 3090 graphics card, he should have been getting better performance. So he reinstalled and started from scratch and reported back to me, it's the best performance he's had for as long as he can remember in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Does that mean we shouldn't do any changes? No, I'm not saying that. But it's quite common for people to make changes to their sim when they're perfectly happy with their performance anyway. So my recommendation, once again, it's a fairly simple one. If you're getting a good performance from your sim and you're satisfied with it, then leave it alone. Make a note of the changes in case you ever have to rebuild your system and of course your settings and configs and just go and enjoy your sim. Enjoy your aviation and the magnificent scenery and destinations that await you. And speaking from personal experience, those that fly in VR, due to the extra demand on system resources, are particularly susceptible to tweak mania. Closely linked to this and more applicable to fairly new starters in flight simulation is have realistic expectations. Take the time to find out what sort of hardware is required to provide an acceptable performance and for those on a budget, well, the Xbox is a real consideration. There are limitations, but I fly on both PC and Xbox, and the Xbox performs admirably. 
and is worth a look. You also have to accept if you want a level of immersion and realism, there's a steep learning curve. It's unavoidable. The beauty of course is having this on a home computer or Xbox where you can do it in your own time. And this leads me nicely on to the second pitfall. And many are guilty of this, it's just a matter of degree. And it's something I call the Atgani Syndrome. What is it? Well, it's all the gear and no idea. And at times, for some flight simmers, this can have a devastating effect, resulting in them giving it up. You've probably guessed what I mean by now, and this one applies particularly to those that are fairly new to flight simming, but not in all cases. I've already mentioned there's a fairly steep learning curve. This applies equally to hardware purchases, yokes, throttles, rudders and so on, and also different aircraft and downloads for the sim. Don't swamp yourself with too much kit at one time. Build it up slowly. Take your time to learn and master the current peripheral you're using. At the same time you're learning more about the sim that you're flying. Then you're ready to move on to upgrade. If you're unsure at first, start with a budget line. Check out reviews on YouTube and such. Not just one, but multiple. That'll allow you to make considered purchases in the future. I mentioned we're all guilty of this, it's just a matter of degree. How many of us have purchased an aircraft, for example, and it probably has less than an hour in the air? You bought it, you flew it, you parked it in the hangar, and that's where it stayed. Once again, if you can afford it, that's okay. But the chances are it's still in your hangar because it's complicated to fly, or difficult to master. Or perhaps it's a very poor representation. Hmm, should have checked out those reviews perhaps. If you're a casual flight simmer, then a lot of what I've said probably won't apply to you. But for the flight sim enthusiast, and if you're spending three or four hours up in the air each week, well you fall into the enthusiast category in my book. Just be careful that we manage the tweak mania and that Ghani syndrome, we can't eliminate them, but it's as well to bear them in mind. And perhaps a good idea occasionally to remind ourselves why we love flight simulation. We love it because we fly it. We love the sensation of being in the air. And perhaps we love the escapism it provides. Well there we have it, it's off my chest. I've said what I wanted to say. Do you fall or have you fallen into any one of the categories mentioned? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for joining me today. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you again very soon and bye for now.